Andrew Yang has dropped out of the race um, after New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, I had, uh, I had uh, pretty high hopes uh, for, for Andrew Yang. Uh, I, I really liked him as a personality. I, you know, I don't know him personally. I, he, he seems like a very nice guy. He seems like a very caring individual. Um, but uh, uh, the, the more limelight he got and the more he kind of talked about things and... Uh, you know, there, there, I had some problems with it. Um, you know, I I liked a, a lot of the ideas he brought up. A lot of the ideas he brought up were very, very cool. They were awesome. And uh, things that we hadn't really heard about in the mainstream. So I was a fan. But the, uh, as this campaign kind of kept going, um, you know, the more conflicted I ended up with him and, and kind of the real breaking point behind it uh, was some of the things that he said about Julian Assange uh, and and not pardoning him. Um, and to me, it, was, it just seemed like a little bit of a reckless thing. He, he also kind of went... He also went down the Russiagate train a little bit, uh, which was a little disappointing uh, for me. Like, and, he, and he was doing that from the very first debate. Uh, that was a bit disappointing. Uh, for me, but uh, overall, you know, I, I liked him. I thought he was he was pretty cool, and and you know, I was glad that he was in it because he was bringing up um, UBI and automation, and, and we didn't really see a whole lot of that um, being discussed in the in the state of politics. Uh, so uh, you know, uh, this is this is from the Atlantic, and they talked to Andrew Yang about about you know ending his campaign and everything, and. Uh, I used to read The Atlantic all the time, um, and, I, and I thought they were a really good paper and stuff, but I've seen some stuff from The Atlantic uh, over the last few years that I've been very disappointed with because it's very, like, just coded with this neoliberal agenda. And they, and they might have always been in a neoliberal newspaper um, with these sort of, like, um, pro-establishment uh, rhetorics and stuff, but they but they masked it pretty well, and uh, maybe maybe it's just that I have I have been able to see through the mask. I don't know. Uh, I'm top my own horn here. I'm tooting my own horn here a little bit uh, by that statement. I know the statement kind of comes off a little arrogant, uh, but uh, but yeah. So they they basically said Yang's UBI uh, isn't really doable. Uh, much like Bernie's Medicare for All. Which is bullshit. Because it is doable. It's just you don't want to fucking do it. Medicare for All is doable. It's just you don't want to fucking do it. Just say that. Just be like, yeah, it's doable, but uh, we don't, we don't want to because we want to be rich and, uh, and, uh, and keep pe- poor people poor. That's really it. Like, they don't... It, it's... You're you're sowing, you're sowing, you know. Uh, it's not an it's not an accurate critique of UBI just to be like it's undoable. Well, why? What's the problem with it? We'll get into some of the complications that I think uh, America would have with UBI in a in a, uh, a brief moment. Um, but. <laughs> It's this is it's just so disappointing to see that from from the Atlantic, which I thought was a was a you know a rag that I thought I could really enjoy, uh, but the main point of the article was that Yang has not endorsed anybody. Um, he has not endorsed anybody, but he doesn't want Donald Trump to win. Uh, uh, but he's going to go spend time with his wife and kids uh, because they're important to him, and uh, you know it's been a hard trail in the campaign uh, when you kind of go on the road and I know this is when you're on the road for an extended period of time you don't get to see your your friends and your loved ones all that often and and when you take that time off you know you really cherish those uh, cherish those times Uh, if I was to wager a guess uh, I think Yang will either endorse Bernie or Tulsi um 
the reason I say that is not just because, obviously, I'm a big supporter of the two of them. Um, and, I, and it would be awesome if that, that's the case, right? Like, what a, what a, what an amazing unifying force that would be if, if we had, we had Bernie supporters, Solskjaer supporters, and the Yang gang all, all merging into being this, like, huge coalition against the establishment. Uh, it, that, it, that, I think that would be really fucking cool. Uh, so, um, but I also think that, you know, uh, one Tulsi Gabbard came out and thanked him for, for running and she said that she's going to carry the message of universal basic income, um, and move that forward. Uh, and you know, of course at the the end she, she said she hopes that the Yang gang will come on, uh, come on board with, with her campaign and, and carry the torch. Uh, you know, the work is not done, as Andrew Yang said in his, in his farewell speech. Um, uh, is farewell speech? Is that, a, is that the thing that it would be? I don't even know. Uh, but in that speech where he said that he's not running anymore. Uh, and, they, and they seemed pretty chummy with each other, you know. Uh, they, at least the public persona was pretty chummy, and they were, they were very nice to each other. And it was kind of cute. It was kind of cute to see them, like, on Twitter and stuff. To be like, hey, saw you're on the debate. Good job, you know. Hey, thanks for doing that thing. And hey, here's some fucking toffee and shit. It's pretty cute. Um, but I do, you know, I do think that Tulsi's Tulsi's ta- uh, talking to, uh, has talked about UBI a little bit. Um, uh, I don't, I haven't heard Bernie talk about it. But the other thing is, like, it would just make sense for for Bernie to be endorsed by him too because UBI is seen as a pretty like democratic socialist idea uh, and it like it would just make sense for Bernie to pick it up I know he's uh, he, he's on the federal jobs guarantee train which I I don't particularly think is a good idea uh, once again that would be something that I would I would need to do a little bit more homework on uh, and I have that on my long list of uh, uh, long list of things that I need to do. Uh, homework on I want to do a video about Uh, so uh, you know down the line there'll probably be a a video about that but um, yeah I I don't um, I don't see why uh, the you know some of the Yang supporters wouldn't go to Bernie Uh, and some of the why why, some of the Yang supporters go to Tulsi the thing is, all three of these candidates kind of started speaking to uh, right wingers, conservatives, right? Not the, you know, the, again, it's like one of those things where if I say right wingers and conservatives, everybody's like racists. No, these are these are fiscal conservatives that uh, you know don't want to want to spend money frivolously they want to make sure that this country is taken care of on an economic level and uh take care of their own families like that's that's sort of the 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 thing that that and andrew yang kind of is bringing up economic principles that are that are essentially like yeah these are going to do that and so yang had that tulsi's definitely got that bernie started to got bernie started getting that too it's like a bunch of people already kind of jumping on that train um so it just makes sense that because they kind of have uh, a, a percentage of their supporters are uh, similar, um, it just makes sense that like some of the Yang supporters would go to either Bernie or Tulsi. And I might be wrong about this, but that I mean that's that's sort of the prediction that I'm I'm making here. But here's the thing, right? Despite him being uh, out of the race, he he is pretty instrumental and pretty important. Uh, to the 2020 uh, Democratic race, and, and uh, let, let's go down. Let, let's go down the a, cu- a couple of reasons why, the major reasons why, and the, I think there's three major reasons why. Um, one is UBI, Universal Basic Income. Uh, he brought that into the mainstream conversation. Andrew Yang brought Universal Basic Income, a fringe idea that. Uh, I started looking into universal basic income in 2013. I started talking about it in 
2015, maybe? 2016? Uh, maybe later? I, but I've been doing videos about universal basic income for a couple years. And it was a pretty fringy idea, even when I was talking about it. Uh, and now, it's on everybody's lips. Everybody's fucking talking about it. All of a sudden, in the last two years, we've been having this conversation about universal basic income. That wasn't a thing before. And, and I think Andrew Yang was, was pretty instrumental in making that part of the mainstream conversation. Ah. So that's very important. Um, now, I do think that Andrew Yang's universal basic income is kind of the starter kit for universal basic income, right? I don't, I, I'm not particularly the biggest fan of it. Uh, the way that he proposes it, uh, but uh, but I'm glad that he's bringing it up, and I think that uh, uh, I, I think the reason why he proposed it the way that he was proposing it was to, was essentially to help conservatives figure out uh, how it can be beneficial and how it can be done. Um, so, uh, and it sort of it sort of works kind of sort of with not not really in tandem with the the welfare programs like it's like if you're on welfare you don't get the UBI but in my opinion it should take it into account and the starting point of UBI should be uh, where the welfare program is so like but even that is a complicated notion with America. And really the, the reason why it becomes a little complicated and it would be a, a complete restructuring of the way that we uh, look at things and the way that we kind of address things is because like people that are on welfare and social security and all that sort of stuff, like it changes from state to state. It changes based on like what the cost of living state to state is. So in order to even it all out, that means that we're going to have to look at property values and chuck them out the window and say that it doesn't matter whether you live in San Francisco or Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a one bedroom apartment costs what a one bedroom apartment costs, right? So if on a national level, we do an average and we say, based on all of this stuff, we think, based on, based on how much money people are making, based on um, you know, the uh, cost of utilities, based on uh, what, how many other factors do you want to throw into it, right? Is, well, one bedroom apartment, on average, should cost $500 a month. Let's say that right great and it's like okay based on this a family of four eats this much food uh you know they they eat 500 worth of food an individual uh on average eats about 200 worth of food and and then now you throw that in and now you know that's and that's like food stamps right so if somebody's getting food stamps and they're getting getting the specific amount of food stamps so again you can kind of collectively figure it out we have some infrastructure in place to to gather this data and make this work but again you're gonna have to fun, fundamentally change how the market works so a Whole Foods uh, and using Whole Foods only because it's the most posh of posh fucking foods if, 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 if a Whole Foods in Pittsburgh charges a uh, dollar seven for bananas but in you know New York City it's a buck 25 what well, too fucking bad the average consensus is 89 cents for bananas uh, and that's and now that's what it is that's what the cost of bananas so everything kind of gets standardized um, and, and now it's like everybody's like oh man it sucks Every, oh everybody's just gonna kind of live in this no it's not everybody doesn't have to live in the same thing it's just the cost of things are standardized mm -hmm. right which means that now it doesn't matter where you live uh, you're, you're living in a city because you prefer to live in that city because of because the people in that city are cool or 
uh, because you like the scenery around there or you're a city person and uh, or you're a country person and you want to live a little bit further out and you know these sort of other preferences you that's the and now you have more choices to work with rather than the choice being made on an on an economic level because you know it's it is more expensive to live in the burbs i you know it's like oh i would love to live in the burbs but i can't afford it but i so i have to live in the city where an apartment costs five six hundred dollars cheaper than living in the burbs it doesn't matter now you can live you have more choice in that respect um but in order to get that you would have to standardize the markets and then and that's whenever you know the notion of socialism and stuff comes into play because then you can't you can't have a a a, 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 a landlord that uh, just jacks up the rent for no reason. So so you know it's not a one stop measure. It's it's multi levels to it because then you would have to say, well you can't uh, you can't do that. You can't just fucking raise your rent because the government is giving people you know, $2,800 a month to cover a bunch of their expenses. You know, doctors can't just be like, oh, um, you know, this procedure is 10, like, that's the point of standardizing it. That's the point of uh, doing that. And, um, and then you kind of talk about like, well, how do you, how do you, how do landlords get paid? How, how does maintenance get taken care of? Is that done by the government? Which is a part of the conversation that I think uh, we, we would have um, and 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 work on a system and work on these ideas from 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 there on out. Um, but it it would fundamentally change the way we look at these sort of things. And you know, it's like to me, part of the argument right now is what is a basic need. Uh, I look at basic needs as housing, clean water, good food, health, um, and at this point. With the way things work, I also think the internet. I think the internet is also a uh, a basic need, right? The uh, information, uh, connection, communication. These are that's also part of uh, part of the basic needs package there. Um, so all of that connected together, um, you you write a stipend. Um, so let's say that let's say that the stipend is to $2,500 a month per American um, and you know, it's like value added taxes put into place corporations have to pay their fucking taxes and shit uh, well people aren't going to work blah 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 right I've heard that excuse a uh, hundred billion times and go check out all of my old videos about universe basic income uh, because I address some of these stigmas and what, what, what will happen and uh, they won't Manitoba did a thing, 13% of people didn't work, uh, but everybody else either went back to the job that they wanted to or pursued uh, some kind of, uh, some kind of uh, creative uh, or, or innovative pursuits that they have uh, always wanted to and have been passionate about. So there's always a chance, uh, always a, 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 a road to uh, make more money than just what the government would be providing for you. Um, it, it, it then becomes more about the individual. Um, so then, you know, if you wanted other things, like if you wanted to pick your own doctor, if you wanted to get cosmetic surgery, if you wanted to get a house just for yourself, right? Like if, if, if that's not within the universal basic income plan because uh, you, you've said, oh, I just want to live in a one-bedroom apartment by myself. Um, and, you, and then you're like, no, I want to live in a house by myself. Well, then that way now you have to, you know, pay for that uh, separately. So, again, you still have that option if needed. Um, the, other, the other thing that Andrew Yang brought up was automation. Not, no, I mean, almost no candidate really talked about automation. And this is the real reason why the, the labor market is in jeopardy is because automation is coming, right? Robotics are going to take over and, uh, and that's going um, to take away a lot of people's jobs. 
He talked about truck drivers losing their jobs a whole lot. Um, that was a big part of his base. Uh, when he did the, the Joe Rogan podcast, I think he talked about riding in a truck with somebody and talking to this guy about it. Um, but he's the only person bringing it up. And it's important to have this conversation about automation and what's coming uh, because it is the real problem. It's not immigrants that are coming to take your job. It's automation. It's the robots that are coming to take your jobs. So, you know, we need to have that conversation, and he did. Lastly, Andrew Yang talked about a human-centric campaign. That was something that uh, he he brought up as well. And, uh, um, you know, I think that is important as well. Um, and running a campaign about about people and, and that's a very Bernie-esque idea. Um, you know, what are what ideas can we talk about that are going to benefit humanity um, for for the long run? That I think that's part of the reason why he talked about principles like universal basic income and um, automation and legalizing all drugs and administering them in a specific facility that uh, you know people can go to and get their dose of what they need, be monitored, be safe about it, get educated, uh, you know. So all of that was driven so that people could have the most freedoms, have their choices, be part of a system that is taking care of each other. Um, and again, he is one of the very few candidates uh, on the Democratic stage that really talked about that. Um, and, you know, so that's why I think in, in the course of the conversation going forward uh, in 2020, uh, yeah, Andrew Yang is still going to be a pretty important figure uh, because he brought up some pretty important ideas. Uh, and I hope that he endorses... I, I mean, ideally, if he endorses both Bernie and Tulsi, that'd be fucking awesome. Uh, but I'll take one or the other. I'd be very disappointed if he if he went down the mainstream DNC route and, and said somebody like Warren or Buttigieg or, or Klobuchar or even Bloomberg... Uh, I don't think he will. He doesn't seem like he's the type, but it would it would be very disheartening. But I do, you know, I do think that he is he he he, he was an important figure um, uh, so far uh, for the conversation that we're having in the uh, in, in the grand scheme for 2020. Hey everybody! Thank you so much for checking out this video. Uh, if you if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please give it a, a share. Share it around with some friends, with some enemies, whoever you think would uh, would enjoy content like this. Uh, content like this is not often shown to a lot of people because of the subject matter. So uh, it is completely dependent on you guys to uh, to share this around and, and spread the word. Uh, and uh, make sure that you're, you're, you subscribe and like uh, and do all that fun stuff. Uh, and, uh, if you enjoyed the content that I, uh, that I talked about in this video, there is a good chance that you will also enjoy my live stand-up comedy show. And I'm going to be, uh, on tour. I'm touring, uh, all around the country with, uh, with my socially conscious stand-up comedy show. Uh, I'm coming to Denton, Texas, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm opening for my good friend Lee Camp, in Austin, Texas, and Dallas, Texas, as part of his book release tour. Uh, I'm going to be in Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and a bunch of other dates. Uh, if you want to see my entire tour schedule to see if I'm coming to a city near you, you can go to my website, which is ramanoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Check out my whole tour schedule. You can uh, sign up for my email list there. You can check out past videos, old stand-up videos, old uh, road reflections, forkful of noodles, taboo table talk. Just by, it's your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan people. Uh, so uh, I hope you guys check that out, and uh, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. We'll see you on the road. Thanks, guys.